Hello everyone, hello, hello. Welcome to Tea Time with Dr. Yabo. This is my ninth episode, October 18th. We have the amazing Neza Alawi with us today. Hello everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Please tell your friends that we're here live and I think yes I think Neza is here but Neza I'm going to wait for a few more people to join before I bring you on there's a way that you can request um, there's a way you can request to join me live <laughs> I hope you can see the button trust me I'm no good with technology. I've just been learning these things as I go. So there should be a place that you can request me live. So welcome everybody. This is my Instagram live talk show, Tea Time with Dr. Yabo. Welcome, welcome everybody. Thanks so much. And please tell your friends. Oh yeah, there we go. So Neza is here. So I'm going to have you come on Neza and then we'll wait for a few more people to join. Welcome everyone. Welcome to my Instagram live talk show. I started this talk show about two or three weeks ago. Hi Neza. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Good, good, good. So you. Can you? Yeah, so you're just like me with um, technology, right? You're still yeah. learning these things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I started learning, what, several months ago, but every time I still have to do something new. Thank you so much. I know you're busy. So I really appreciate you coming on. I really Thanks. appreciate you coming on. Thanks so much. It's a pleasure, Dr. Yabo. Thank you. So I'm waiting for a few more people to come in, but we'll start in a couple minutes. I'm going to start um, talking, I'm tell, telling people about you. So mm -hmm. welcome everyone to my show, my Tea Time with Dr. Yabo show. This is the ninth episode, and I bring on amazing, amazing guests that can help with or everything women leadership women empowerment lifestyle business because my mission and my hope is to create many women who have a fulfilling life who have a purpose-driven life and financially free life so those are the three things for me fulfilling purpose-driven and financially free if I can get everything in there if I can get women to do all of those there's some people who are going to start posting terrible things. So I'm going to try to take them out. So this is Neza Alawi. Everyone meet her. She is busy, so I'm so happy to have her today. So Neza is a global advocate for the economic empowerment of women, and she has an active community of 1.4 million. She's the founder and the CEO of the Meshad Group, which is a women-centric composed of enterprises dedicated to leadership, development, diversity, and inclusion. And I think her background is Moroccan, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so African. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So am I pronouncing your name right? Neza Alawi? Yes, yeah. exactly. Okay, wonderful. So everyone, welcome. So we're just going to start because one hour goes by fast. So Neza and I, I believe we have identical goals for women. Because I just told you the three things that I hope and wish for for women. I just, if I could make every woman a successful entrepreneur who is financially free and who is a leader in their industry, I would do that. And I believe that's also what Neza works with. So I believe that's her mission and her hope too. So since we have identical goals, Neza, can you tell people, all the people, I think there's a few men on here, but can you help us? with how we can create more females in women leadership and women that are more economically powerful? Well, thank you, Dr. Yabu, for hosting me today. I, I just think that when women get to leadership role, they, they do help other people to, to rise with them. And, uh, and also women give back to communities and they, they're working on this new form of feminine leadership in which they're very active in society change. So these mm -hmm. are already three reasons why we should help women on top of, of the part that you're helping one individual woman to, to succeed. 
uh, you're helping society advance and change. And women are the, are the mothers of next generations. And that's also another point that I like to say, because whether they have kids at home or not, they always feel responsible for the next generations. Yes. Okay, so how can we do that in practical forms? Because I work with women now, I'm co I coach women, I've been teaching medical students for many, many years men and women but i noticed that the women amongst them and even the women that i coach now a lot of women are still a little bit shy not that they're shy but they still don't know how to get into that leadership role so how can we start to encourage more women how can we start to give them more confidence well you're talking about that shyness it's women feel that they're always um don't have enough qualifications to step up yes. when you will put a man in the same position that doesn't specifically know how to handle a certain promotion, but yeah. he feels like, yeah, I can do it and then I will learn. And so it's that type of confidence for women to just have the courage to say yes when there is an opportunity for them, for women to understand that they need to be financially empowered to be able to give back. So a lot of women um, just are kind of like running away from making money, even though they wake up every day and they think that I'm here, I want to make money, but then they, they feel like, oh, I don't want to make money just to make money. I want to make money, but I want to do something with passion. I want to do something, you know, that gives back to the community. Yes. But I tell them, you need to make your money. And then once you make it, you choose to whom you give it. So stop being afraid to make money. Stop stop thinking that it's going to take you from your core values to mm. just talk business and talk money. So yes. a lot of what I do here in New York and throughout our international organization is help women network to do business together. So that's why I think that the fact that our missions are, are similar, it is important for us to gather and to be in each other's platform and, and to help each other succeed. Yes, that is so important. You said many important things here. And everybody who is on, you have Neza here for one hour. So don't say I didn't tell you. So ask your questions. Don't be shy. We can't see your faces. We can't hear you speak. So start asking me the questions. Everything about business, about empowerment, about networking, about leadership. Please ask your questions. Because I see some of you here, my friends, and you're not asking questions but you'll send it to my DM. So don't DM me, just ask now because Neza is here. So Neza said many uh, important things. She said that women tend to be afraid of making money because we want, we want to make sure that you're, you want to make sure that you're passionate and some women are kind of scared of making money. And I've noticed that a lot too. She also said it's important that women network with each other. For me, that's the most important thing, networking with each other. We all have to be women that can help each other. I, I didn't know Neza from anywhere. Nobody introduced me to her. I just sent her an email and a DM, and she was so kind enough to reply me. So if yeah. more women, yes, if more women do this, then the world will be a better place. But sometimes we want to hide our success. We want to hide our gifts. We don't want to share it with other women. We can't do that. We have to help each other grow. And it's, don't be afraid of making money. Now, Neza, why is it that women are scared? Not that they're scared, but why are they so worried about making m money? I feel like women want to help the world but they don't think about, oh, I can help the world and I can also make money. Yes, exactly. They, they just, they, they are so altruistic, which is a positive thing, yeah. that they, they feel that their journey has to be about fixing the world when yeah. in reality they have to first put themselves in a position of power financially yes. and through their influence to be able to give back. And, and another thing is that I find in networking is there has been a lot of networking initiatives. Women get together and they will talk about many things, but they won't like just be clear about it for my business. This is where I stand it up.
clear about what they need and and to to be able to to have their elevator pitch and understand every time what is it does it okay can you hear now Nick, I was cutting off. Or is it Nez? Who is free? Yeah, freezing. <laughs> Who is it, Neza or me? Yes, I can hear Who you. Who is freezing? I can hear you. Yeah. So you see here, Janet is saying that she would like to interview you. Yes. Dr. Yes. Yabo. So yes. That, that's the thing is you just need to, to ask. And, and more than, you know, having that courage to ask, it's also identifying what is it that you need from a person yes. and interaction. Uh, we are all busy. Women are even busier than yeah. everyone because they're juggling with their personal life and their career. And mm -hmm. so we just need to be precise on our needs and give the tools for others to help us, you know. Yes. When, and you anticipate, hey, could you connect me to that? Here is, you know, like the, the little like presentation, you know, that you're going to send. Here is the deck and so on. So men have always been networking naturally men grew up playing football as a yes. team playing you know like that sports that's required to be in a team yeah so when, when women were more um you know like sitting and playing you know like with a doll and like being in their <laughs> imaginative world where they can spend hours and hours you know like in an interaction with themselves mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. So, so men were natural <laughs> networker, yeah. and then as they grew, they've always been part of clubs, and and then mm. when they get to 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 high social level, then they have their golf club, they have their cigar club, they have, mm. and these are places where a lot of work and business is being done. They That's they, and and this is also what I love to share. I. I'm someone who loves my moments of pleasures with my friends. Mm -hmm. And so why can't we sit and, you know, like have a glass of like our favorite wines and create something together? Yes. So, yes. so, so that's also what I encourage. It's have creative projects with your friends, either business project or, you know, the social projects. Like, yes. It, you're in an environment with other women that have nothing to do with your business, even mm -hmm. though we can always, you know, I can be your client, you can be, you know, like someone else's client. We're, we, we can always talk about what we're doing in business and, and help each other. And if we have even more free time, that's when we decide to do a small social project for our community. Yes. That's another topic that I talk a lot about because we, we have the Meshat Foundation. And tell, tell us about that. Tell everybody about the Meshat Foundation. I've read a lot about it, but I want to hear from you. Sure. Well, the Meshat Foundation is, is something that I started after working for the United Nations and, and going to five different countries for the World Food Program. Ethiopia, Haiti, Mozambique, um, Senegal, and Mauritania. Mm -hmm. And what I saw there is that there are the women cooperatives, which is groups of women in rural parts of Africa that are regrouped over the same type of production, argan oil, agricultural production, and so on. And mm -hmm. these women, so, so they put them together so that they can share equipment and um, like work together and then share profits. But they were having a lot of hard time selling their products. And, and, and so, so with the Meshat Foundation, we put in place this signature um, training program where we train them, buy them equipment, and help them distribute their production. 
And that as well is something that I started at the beginning of my entrepreneurial journey. And, and what I like to say um, people is, you know, it doesn't take you to be rich to create a foundation and it doesn't, you don't need to have a foundation to, to do a social project. You just think of everything that you're doing, mm -hmm. like you, Dr. Yabo, you're, you're empowering women through mm -hmm. lifestyle advisors and, and coaching. Mm -hmm. And so what if you gave like, you know, five programs per year to women who cannot afford to buy your program, mm -hmm. who come from your social class. And it's like, if you're sponsoring them. Yes. To, and so, so yeah, so we, we can all in, in every business that we are, we can all mm. give back by just having a sponsorship program for other people that cannot afford being our client. That's wonderful. So we can do that on the side. We can have a foundation on the side to empower women who cannot afford it. And then the ones who can afford it, they pay for the, for the, uh, for our gifts. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, I really, really like what you said about women have to put themselves in a position of power first before they can empower other people. That is so crucial because I, I had a coaching session yesterday with several women and I told them that I said, you have to empower yourselves. You have to make yourself successful to a point first. And then you feel like, oh yes, I have the power for me. I got my voice when I had my first but when I had my practice and my first business that was successful and that gave me a voice and it gave me confidence and power. So I tell women that you have to step out. If you'd stay in your comfortable zone, nothing is going to happen. So can you please exaggerate that for women in my community and let them know that if you continue life as it is, yeah. life is going to yes. be as it is. Yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> I think it's so important uh, because I see a lot of efforts that women are, are putting in place to try to succeed yeah. their careers and they don't understand why they're not succeeding it and they don't understand why it's, you know, they feel that they're putting so much effort. But I yeah. think we have an unconscious mental blockage that yeah. they need to, to overcome because at the end of the day, uh, we need like, in life, I, I don't believe in, in luck. I believe in creating luck. And so if you keep running away from opportunities uh, because you're always finding a reason to run mm -hmm. away from opportunities, then, then you're wondering why it's not succeeding. And, and so, so one, they need to really, really, really understand that if they don't succeed, they will not be able to also empower their kids. A lot of women give up on careers because they have kids and they feel that they should not. Um... Yes, someone is saying, I have mm -hmm. some the fear of the, failure. The and fear not of being, failure, yeah. If your gift will be accepted is an issue. Well, yes, this fear of failure, it, we have to talk about it. Fear and guilt are two feelings that, that come with the package as a woman. Because society yes. <laughs> has always put us in those, uh, in those two feelings. You know, it's like yes. as a child, everyone is gonna tell you, be careful, be careful, be careful. They're yes. not gonna tell it to your brother, but they're gonna say it to you. Be careful, yes. something might happen to you, be careful. And then the other thing is, is the guilt. It's the, be careful, okay? because people will judge you because you know like as as a mother you will feel that uh, you know as a daughter you're always concerned about am i being a good daughter as as a mother you're always concerned am i being a good mother so it's so important that we get away from those feelings and we understand that there was a manipulation over our heads uh of that and and so and if we want to be able to to grow as women we need to understand that a lot of content that we watched as kids like like disney movies you know where we're waiting for the prince charming like like a lot of you know of those content from our generation has influenced us to stay in a passive state to to yeah. wait for things to come to us and to mm. 
always be looking for for that yeah. next person who's going to save us that next relationship who's going to uh save us and that it, it's important we are in another uh generation we have fought from the mid 60s through all the feminist movement to get where we are today there is still a lot to do but mm. Yeah. We need to also understand that it is, and 2020 is a great time for it, okay? We're going through a global <laughs> pandemic. It's Good, like, I'm glad, I'm glad it's you said that. Yeah. It's true, you know? And so yes. <laughs> it has a lot of negative impact, but it also has that impact for us to, to stand up after and say, okay, this yeah. is the new me. This is a new era. There are new Absolutely. opportunities that are out there. Who do I want to be yeah. in this new world? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. I say that to women all the time. Too many people, you see it on their posts, they're talking negative about 2020. And I understand it's not an easy time. I don't want to downplay that at all. We've lost, we've lost too many lives. But I tell women that this is the perfect opportunity. For me, actually, this year has been one of my most productive years. Because yeah. when things like this are happening, that's when the world needs leaders. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's when the world needs leaders. So women, what I've been saying, Neza just said the same thing. You can go to all my posts and look there and see. I've been telling you 2020, there's a shift happening. There's an awakening happening. You don't want to be left behind. The world is changing. I'm not saying you should change yourself but the world needs your gifts. So you have two choices. It's either that you go out and start using your gifts and just say, okay, it's either I fail or I succeed, right? Mm -hmm. And if you fail, guess what? It's a learning process. I've failed many times, but I don't let it stop me. I just keep going. So please, guys, we have, what, two and a half months left in the year. You still have time to step out and start getting your power, so that you can use that power to empower other people. Because if you don't feel empowered, you can't do anything. And my dear friend is here, Dr. Tifal. Yeah, she's a, a, a doctor friend of mine. And um, yes, Toy is saying a mindset of progress over perfection will get women moving. Many fear failure or crave perfection. Yeah, but there's nothing like perfection. Only God yeah. is perfect. <laughs> you know, yeah. so nobody's perfect. Only God is perfect. perfect. So, you know, you just, it's, it's an evolution. You're going to keep failing and then you learn and you move on and you succeed. So that's the way we have to go with that. So, Neza, let me ask you, though, is social media essential for success in this day and age? Is it, yeah, is it important so. to be present on social media for women? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I think that definitely in, in 2020, and I think it, it slowly started in the 2000s, became mm -hmm. much more prominent in 2010. And, and, and we're seeing also the businesses that are falling over uh, the pandemic are the ones that were not digital. And we're yes. seeing that what made us survive yeah. over the pandemic is the fact that we are digital. And, and so, yes, media is a tool for us to communicate where we're all equal because we all have the same tool and, and right. we can express it. Right. And I, I started my journey on social media in 2011, created my account on Instagram. So it's been a long journey. And I, I started as a photographer, uh, wow. and, and, you know, I, I always was a great communicator, always felt the importance to communicate everything that I was doing, but yeah. with the more, you know, there was like the good quality of the picture plus the story. What is the story yes. behind? It's not yes. like I'm just, you know, taking a selfie if I'm yes. not telling the story about it. So, so that consistency makes people understand who you are and what you thrive for. But also the audience needs to be, you know, if you're posting a quote every day, it's not, it, it, people get bored. They do understand who you are and what you stand for, but then you also need that diversity of content. They, 
yeah. people want to get closer to you they want you know like to understand what is your personal life like because they relate more to you and and to what you're doing in business oh good yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. you know i'm no i'm smiling and laughing because the session i had yesterday Yes. A few of the women asked me that, so Dr. Yabo, how do you know what to post every day? You post like three, four times a day. Yes. And I told them, I said, I just post my story. I said, I just yes. post my, you know that you have to say everything about your personal life. No, that's not why you have to keep some things private, depending. But you just talk about life. So you can never run out of content. And exactly. the, yeah, the more you post, the more you have more creativity yeah. to post. So exactly. I'm, I'm glad you're saying that today about yeah. the quality of the picture, right? People being able to interpret, and people were very visual people, especially now it's even gets, you know, you don't have to be Miss World. You don't have to be like the most beautiful woman in the world, no. Anybody can look beautiful. You just put your makeup on. If you can't afford a photographer, there's iPhone, there's Android, good lighting. Yeah. I'm using my ring light now. Just do that, but make sure people yeah. can see you and tell a story. That's exactly. all it's about. Yeah, right. Tell us. So this is, this is what I was telling them yesterday. So this is so important. So let me ask you something, though. You talked about um, that social media is very important now. What if a woman comes to you and they say, I'm too shy. I don't want to be on social media, but I yeah. still want to build wealth and I still want to be influential, but I don't like putting myself out there. Yeah, I, I meet a lot of people that still, a lot of women that still think that social media is controversial. And like, like anything in life, you know, if you're not using it with the right purpose, then it becomes controversial, okay? Yeah. So, so um, I, and, and I also meet, I meet two, two types of, of women. So the one that wants to succeed and doesn't want go, to go through the route of social media because it gives her anxiety. She doesn't know, yeah. you know, like how to do it, which is what you were yeah. describing. Yeah. And then I, I find very talented women very talented women that have been doing, you know, the same thing over and they became an expert at what they're doing. Uh, they, they're succeeding without much communication, but then that happens when you really, really, really focused on one thing and you do it over 20 years, obviously it makes equal. But we also know that as, you know, the new generation of like women living in 2020, we, we have different talents. We don't want to focus on only one talent yeah sure okay. yes so so therefore we need to communicate and and so the, this uh, scenario of that woman who's talented and and doesn't want to communicate on social media because she feels like you know i'm just good at, at what i do and i find it that it's a little like you know hypocrite or trying to put myself out there by you know using social media and so on yeah. And I say no, not at all. You're not doing it. You're doing it because I think it's selfish if you have a talent and you're not sharing it. Yes. You know, it's like communicating about you doesn't mean that it's you're flattering your ego and you're going on the opposite. I mean, you're exposing yourself. You're yeah. exposing yourself to, to nice people, but also to mean people because that's you know like any media is like that you know yes. any media any actor any politician that has put themselves out there and became a public person you yeah. you get you know you get insulted you get you know like always uh, that that's the thing <laughs> yeah. and so so it's not it's not an easy route but yeah. if you have a voice if you have a talent you owe it to the world to share it and inspire people. Absolutely. Because, because exactly, there will always be influences out there and there are the good ones and the bad ones. And, you know, if you have a good influence, what will make this world survive and thrive, it's on how many good influences versus how many bad influences there will be. Yes, so absolutely. It's gonna be a good influence. Yes, so basically the answer is you have to try to like social media right okay good yes, you have to look at it you have to look at it with the mindset of yeah 
I am putting a positive note out there. I'm not, you know, I'm not doing it yeah. in order to show myself. I'm doing it because I have a positive message to put out there, a beautiful picture, a beautiful unitic message, and I'm yes. doing it to inspire others. Yes, that's important. Now, going from the secondary question from that is, I used to be scared of public speaking for so long. A lot of my friends, when they see me now, they're still like, yeah, boy, is this you or somebody else? I think this is somebody else. But so I use my story to explain to women that you don't have to be like the biggest extroverts to speak publicly. But once you start speaking, and you see that your voice and what you're saying is inspiring people, you're going to get better at it. So this is another subject with women. So now that we're talking about social media and knowing that they have to come out to share their gifts, what about the gift of pub public speaking? And I don't think anybody, maybe some people are born speakers, but I think it's a craft that you, you yeah. improve with time. Yeah. Many, many women are scared of that. And I always feel that you really, for you to be able to own your power and your space, yeah. you have to be able to speak. So how do they break that fear of public speaking? Well, yeah. Well, first of all, you said it earlier, you don't mm -hmm. have to, you know, for perfection. Yeah. People want to see that you're human. If yeah. you look like you've just memorized a speech, it doesn't, it doesn't speak to people. Yeah. So just be naturally you. You have the right to stumble. You have the right to say, oh my God, I just forgot my thought. Okay, let me think. It's like, I, I had so many moments <laughs> like that. I, I was in front of, of the media. I, I me didn't too. So much, you know, I take the time to you know, like, think because I'm about to say the truth. I'm yes. not about to say something that is memorized or like to go look for a lie. If I'm going to say the truth, the truth comes from inside. Okay. So yeah. I go in, I deep dive, and then I bring that truth. So first of all, you know, it comes out naturally. So like in most yeah. of the questions that are asked to me, you know, it's, I'm just going to think and, and say, you know, the most natural thing. So it takes out the fear. So we said, no, no fear because we don't want, uh, uh, they, they, we're not looking to be perfect. Mm -hmm. The second thing is to, to actually keep staying in your own truth. So it's okay, you know, to have your moments of thinking and, and recollecting. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and then again, it's, it's that training. The more you do it, the more you're used to telling your story, the, the, yeah. the easier it gets. Yes. Okay. So ladies, women, I hope you're listening to everything that Neza is saying. Neza is passionate about women leadership. She's passionate about empowering women in the economic space to have economic power, to be more leaders. And she's telling us that we have to evolve with the times. Even if if you hate social media, don't think about it as if, you know, it's about you. Yes, but it's not about you. It's about the lives you're going to change. I think I... Uh, Neza, this pandemic that is going on, what do you think about it? Can you give me an idea of, and I know none of us is God, we can't predict anything, but some people are so disabled and so depressed and anxious about the whole thing going on, especially women because they have kids at home. You know, some of the kids are doing online school. They're just overwhelmed with everything. So yeah. can you give a word to women about how they can make this time of the pandemic not so stressful for themselves? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for, first of all, I, I want to relate to them and say that it is a difficult time and it, it has been a shocking time. No one has expected it, even the most prepared, you know, successful women, the most prepared, you know, like business people. So, yeah. but, but I think the difference between some people and others, it's on how long it took us to adapt. And as an entrepreneur and as an innovator and, and a leader, uh, over one week, 
for me, if a decision, a global decision was to make, to be made, you know, to put everyone in quarantine, yeah, that was a big deal. So yeah. it was not going to stop after one week. And so, so, so what I immediately did is spend two weeks with my team, really like on, on Zoom the whole day from morning to, to evening, trying to think what can we do for the women from our network when we mm -hmm. used to do physical events and, and how can we be there for them and what is our new value proposition and what are women going through and so on. Yeah. So, so one, you have to accept the situation. This is a new reality for us. It's yeah. a reality because even if the virus, you know, we find a solution to the virus, when we are used as consumers to, to, to stay in a certain situation for a long time, it changes our habits. So yeah. you have to accept because we cannot do anything about it. You have to adapt. And, and also um, you need to think of, is my business relevant today? Mm -hmm. Because if your business is relevant today and can still work, that means that it's going to be working in the future. But if your business is not working at all today and, and you're not finding any, any solution to, to, to shift your product, then it might never work. Chances are that it might never work. Mm -hmm. So it's very important. I, I've also met a lot of people that are like waiting for that day for things to come back. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, uh, you know, track records have always proved that you don't go backward and in, in yes. like change. And so, so the, the future world is gonna be a better version of what we're living today. But yes. definitely big, big shift to digital, uh, new way of consuming things. We don't, we don't wanna be running all over physically anymore. Uh, we wanna do as many things as, as we can um, digitally and and yes, there has been a lot of unemployment all over the world. Yeah. Because, because all those big companies and smaller companies are also reinventing their value proposition. Yeah. But once they also adapt to accepting what is their new value proposition, they will be hiring again. So you want to be that, 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 that person that becomes an opportunity for them. Uh, if, if you're... If you're, so, so use this time, if you're at home, use this time to get trained. If what kind of training? So that's what I was going to ask you. What kind of skills do you think women need to start mastering in this the time? Digital, the digital the skills? The digital skills, just like we're <laughs> saying, right? Being able exactly. to come out and speak. Totally, exactly. Um, because okay. even if they don't do it for them, they will be doing it for whatever project that they're endorsing, whatever company whether it's a, it's a small entrepreneurial project that they want to achieve or they're working for an entrepreneur or they're working uh -huh. for a company everyone will need those digital skills so <coughs> digital okay. skills uh, leadership training coaching this is the time to to revisit how strong we are and how dareful we are and how, you know, like stable we are in our mind. So leadership training, digital training and skills, and also to explore those passions that we had. A lot of people have had that great idea that they never, you know, created a business plan for it or never explored if, mm -hmm. you know, took it from idea to a business. Now mm -hmm. is the time to do it. So digital space, learn the digital space, speaking, learning the skills on the digital uh, platform, coaching, leadership, and then all those passions you've had. So if you're a doctor or a lawyer or somebody who's lost their job or somebody who works in a restaurant and you've lost your job or you're a medical assistant who've lost your job, now start thinking of your skills your talents your hobbies and how you can monetize those right so um neza when you say digital space you don't mean like learning the technology you are not you don't mean like it yeah i, I don't mean like coding but there okay. are a lot of softwares that are out there where you can create your own website or 
you, you need to you need to understand a little bit uh, what it takes, you know, like to create a website, what it takes to create a social media account, what okay. it takes to run one and the other, mm -hmm. uh, some marketing skills that go with it. Just mm -hmm. for, you, I don't know, you might be a financial person, like a CFO, all right? Yes. But when they will bring you those like digital budgets, mm -hmm. okay? You don't want to be that person who's just going to resist. Oh, but we don't need to spend that money there because you don't understand. Mm -hmm. You know what it is. Go, yes. The, every company is going to need a, a g digital campaign. So yes. you want to understand what it takes, what is the impact, what it costs, what, what everything for you to be able to, to add it to your leader, leadership. Okay. So all these things are good. Everything we're saying, I think women should now understand that the future is digital and if you don't understand the digital space you're going to be left behind so that means you yes. need to put yourself out there as much as possible but the question i get asked over and over and over is how busy women are and i know the answer to this because i'm a mother of two i was married before divorced i have run a practice by myself i do all these things I know the answer. By the way, Neza has a book called Be Who You Want to Be, right? Yes. Yeah. I have to get it and read it. Yeah. Thank so you. Neza has a book called Be Who You Want to Be. Make sure you get it. I have a book called Permanent Happiness. Make sure you get my book also. We're both authors. But women will always tell you, yes, I want to do this. I want to do that. But I don't have time. I don't want to neglect my kids. The guilt that you were talking about. Women want to do everything. They want to cook and clean and be the best wife and be the best mother. They say they don't have time. So how do we help them when they say, Neza, I don't have time. I know I have to do all these things, but I'm tired yeah. at the end of the day. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, I, I, I've been also um, a young mom and entrepreneur and then a single mom and and you know like so so i've gone through you know like the, the those things where i had to take care of many things i'll tell you something yago i made everyone i built a team around me my kids were my team i'm not a slave of my kids and they're not my slave we are a team together and i kept reminding them that Okay, I need you to take care of your homework because this is your part of the duty. I'm not going to come home and run after your homework. I will take care of your uh, uh, comfort, of your to, I'll give you all the structure for you to succeed. Okay, and then the same thing, even with the father of my kids, okay, I divorced him because he was a personal choice, but I didn't make him my enemy and I didn't decide just because we divorced that's that women need to understand like do not every time that you can create a conflict in your life versus you know like uh, uh, a teaming situation choose the the situation you know where you create people and and we're there facing the reality of life life is not easy life is not short I always say life is a marathon okay life, yeah. is, life, life is a long 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 run yes so think think on a long term you know don't think you know like impulsively try to stay peaceful with every piece of the puzzle yes and, i like that yeah. all these elements will make you will give you more time for you to succeed yes yes to be able to succeed you have to choose your battle and I have yes. a chapter in my book, which is Choose Your Battle. Yes. And if your battle is to fight with every single person around you from the moment you wake up until the moment you sleep, then that's your battle. You yes. understand? You're going to stay within like, you know, a conflictual ecosystem. And of course, you're not going to find the time to build the greatest dreams. Exactly. But when your journey and your ambition is to build something big, well, yeah someone is going to send you a punch and you're going to be like thank you and you're just going to move forward because 
do I have that time to sit and, and fight back with that person? Mm -hmm. If that person is a not annoying element that is like draining me and not letting me succeed, what I have to succeed? Yes, yeah. I will sit and face it. And most of the time, communication is the tool to, to, to do it. Mm -hmm. And if you have someone who's stubborn in front of you, you just need to, to let go and cut off the relationship and, and, and continue because if you leave conflictual people around you, you know, they, they will just drain you all the time. They so will, yeah, so that's yeah. what I have to say to, to women who say that they are busy. It's assess your busyness. Are you busy with noise? Are you busy with things, you know, that you, you get stubborn and, and you just, you know, want to be in control of everything? Mm -hmm. Do you have enough people that you can team up around you? Your yeah. kids should be your number one team. Your, your colleagues are your number one team. Don't be in competition with your colleagues. Be a team. Yes. Be a team with your partner. Be a team with your friends. And, mm -hmm. and that's how you can succeed. Yes. That's perfect. There's so many spammers here. I don't know where they are. They must be from your page. <laughs> are they, are they yeah. from your platform? Yeah. I think so. I think they're, they're from yeah. your platform, Neza. They're following you here. So my next question, and I know we've both been divorced. Yeah, it sounds like I didn't know until you said it now. Yeah. A lot of women, I feel, are trapped in marriages that just prevents them from being able to be the best that they can be. I, when I talk to women, I don't tell them, divorce your husband. I never say that. But I always tell them that it's a choice that you have because I can't really, I'm not a marriage counselor, I'm not a therapist. But when I saw, and even my dad was the person who told me at that point that, yeah, boy, this is enough. You need to just move on with your life. My dad told me that. And that's when I thought, oh my goodness. You know, my mom was panicking a bit, but my dad said, yeah, boy, this is too much you know, you need to move on with your life. But not everybody has that. There are a lot of women that are stuck and they are in bad marriages. Therapy is not working. Nothing is working. And if you're in a bad marriage, you and I know you cannot, it's like your whole life is like, you know, no, stuck. stuck. So no. how do we help? Because I get messages from these women all the time and I tell them, I don't know how to help you. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. 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 Yeah, I would love give an advice here i i think that um you know without just saying that if it's a bad marriage today it doesn't mean that it was a bad marriage at the beginning because yes, of course there is a reason why you married the person yes. so that, that, that's another important recognition okay yeah. because people look at it bad and they just think oh my god it's it's like i'm gonna go into this huge fight because this person is terrible yeah and and you know divorce brings out the worst out of people when you're in the middle of the divorce and yeah. so so if you just want you know to stay in in again the fight and and look at that person like a monstrous person you're not gonna solve anything it's gonna no. be like it's <laughs> no. gonna be like a fight to to death, you know? And so, so you need to assess. You have kids together. You might have assets together. And so, and you had love at some point and you had the promise of a marriage at some point. Yeah. Even if it wasn't, you know, an arranged marriage, which happened a lot in, in, yeah. in our cultures and background, there was yeah. a promise of a good deal there, yeah. okay? Well, it didn't happen the way it was. <laughs> yeah. so where do we stand? So that's when it needs to be dealt with a lot of maturity, a lot of emotional maturity, mm -hmm. and to make a choice. And the choice of divorce is definitely the most radical choice of cutting something that is toxic. And it's yeah. important to, to get to there, you know, like when it is toxic. And, and the question is, how fast can I make it? And, and how how you know less impactful can i make it so yeah. if i want to get into you know like a fight for years and years and years well it's yours of your youth it's yours you know that take you away from your business it's yours so 
So you just have to fight for it with logic because the other person also is convinced that they're right. And, um, and so, yeah, so, and once you divorce, just move on. Don't, you know, don't stay in the fight. Put the right distance because yeah, you have to I put know. the right distance. You cannot just divorce and become best friends right away. You have at least like really yeah. one year of completely, you know, let's completely separate. Everyone has their life. Don't want to hear about your life. You don't want to hear about my life. And then, you know, like you can come back to building uh, uh, a co-parenting, uh, a friendship or, or whatever Later is on. left there. But what about women who are concerned about how their children will be? Some women stay because they say um, it's not good for kids to be in divorced homes or they stay because they don't have any money. Money is another big yeah. issue. Women will tell you, if I leave, I don't have any financial security. If I leave, I'm going to be poor. I'm, I'm, so what do I do? And this is another reason why women, you have to be economically empowered. You have to be... Exactly. This, this is what yeah. Neza and I are talking about so that you can avoid these situations. But what about women who are already in that situation and yeah. they say they cannot go because mm. they won't have any money? Yeah. Well, what, yeah. what do we tell them? The reason why uh, we need the financial empowerment because because women can stay in very violent and abusive marriages and yeah. it's true that they cannot leave because not only with the the husband who's who might have you know like some alcoholic problem and be very abusive not yeah. only is you know she she won't have money but she won't even have money to feed her kids and yeah. and these are situations that that you find in like so low social backgrounds and so on and mm -hmm. higher up so yeah so yes so yes so that's why women need to wake up and work. And that's why women need to stop feeling guilty that they're working and that they're not seeing enough their kids because, because actually they need to be financially empowered to, to yes. make the right choices and to be able to back up their kids. Okay. Yes. And, and when we talk about, I need to stay within a marriage for my kids to be happy, that is, a hundred percent wrong. That's not <laughs> true. I know. At times that around parents that are not, that are fighting, that are not loving each other, that are yes. cheating on each other, is not a happy child. Yes. So, want that clarity? Yes, they will cry over it because they don't know what it is when when yeah. people get separated. But if you communicate with them rightly they yeah. will be much more healthier happier and stronger around mm -hmm. a healthy divorced couple than than uh, uh an insane marriage co married couple so absolutely so, yeah. so, absolutely. so I, I think that's really important to remind it i think that the excuse of the kids is no longer an excuse in 2020 okay yes. uh, <laughs> couples have proven for the past two three decades that it's not uh, um, I, I come, I come from a divorced uh, uh, parents because my parents were. It was an ar ar uh, arranged marriage, uh, and after 14 years, my mom decided to divorce. And I've grown up. I have a stepmom, and I have a stepdad, and I have yeah. brothers and sisters on both sides, and I love everyone. And yeah. my kids have four grandparents and and uncles and and aunts that are just 12 years older than them and yeah. we have beautiful and it empowered me to be the most loving and generous person beyond you know my blood it's yes. not I, I have two moms and i have two dads so yes. so it, it it puts me in such a modern mindset right so so yes yeah, so so definitely divorcing when you're in the wrong marriage is is better for the kids than than staying and, and fighting Ab over and over. absolutely 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 so i think we're almost done but i have one question for you thanks so yeah. much Eza. women also have a problem with selling so they have a business and they don't they feel like how am i going to come on social media and start telling people that I'm selling this, so I have an online course, so I'm doing this. Isn't that fun? You know, how can we make women bold 
to know that they have good products they want to sell and they can sell it it's fine yeah. yeah well you know i think women have uh have a lot of, of values when it comes to uh giving a value with their product they, yeah. they're always scared that if i sell it is the price at which am i selling it is it like a good value for for the person and so on yeah yeah so, but i think that this ethical approach that they have should give them even more confidence to sell because they know that if they price it i always said i can sell a handbag at uh, three thousand mm dollar -hmm. but i cannot sell it at one dollar more than what is the real value of it you understand right. it's like yeah. i need to always be sure that i'm giving the the right value otherwise you know like i feel like you know I, i'm not being truthful so yeah. so yes so once you have your product well defined you have your price then you also need to understand that the sales it's not something that happens overnight you yeah. have to be very consistent at putting your product out there um and you have to be confident because you're bringing a solution yes and you're bringing the solution <laughs> absolutely yeah Sometimes you're offering the solution, and yes. that solution is like everything in life. Yes. So, 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 just if you understand that you're not selling, that you're bringing a solution, then mm -hmm. it, it will make us uh, overcome. Okay, that's wonderful. Yes. Somebody asked a question earlier. That's wonderful because I want to be able to tell my community because yes. this video. is going to be on my youtube and i want all of them to go and watch it so i have to tell them neza said it's okay to sell as long as you know it has value and it's going to be, you know solve a problem somebody asked about toastmasters that is it necessary to go to toastmasters to learn about public speaking i don't i don't know i know about toastmasters but i didn't go there yes. Um I haven't been either but it it's good I think that any practices that you can find out there that can help you get in the game is good it mm -hmm. can be books it can be uh putting yourself in this type of situations you know yeah. like just going into interview it can be you hosting a mm -hmm. live or a show uh yeah. to, to get yourself known as we were talking earlier someone came in and said dr yabu i would like to interview so yeah. they're seeing you here and then so so yes anything anything that puts you out there is better than nothing good wonderful thank you neza yeah. we are at one now i don't want to lose this video cuz sometimes instagram right. cuts you off thank perfect. you so right. much i'm going to save it it's going to be on my right. youtube thank you. everybody thanks Very for good. joining Thank you Neza. I'll be in touch. Thank you so yes, much. God bless. Next week. All yes. right. Thank you. Bye-bye.